the journey that we undertake together is the exchange of dark for light, of ignorance for understanding. Nothing you understand is fearful. It is only in darkness and in ignorance that you perceive the frightening and shrink away from it to further darkness. And yet, it is only the hidden that can terrify, not for what it is, but for its hiddenness. The obscure is frightening because you don't understand its meaning. If you did, it would be clear and you would be no longer in the dark. Nothing has hidden value, for what is hidden cannot be shared and so its value is unknown. The hidden is kept apart, but value always lies in joint appreciation. What is concealed cannot be loved, and so it must be feared. What is concealed cannot be loved, and so it must be feared. A quiet light in which the Holy Spirit dwells within you is merely perfect openness in which nothing is hidden and therefore nothing is fearful. Attack will always yield to love if it is brought to love, not hidden from it. There is no darkness that the light of love will not dispel unless it is concealed from love's beneficence. What is kept apart from love cannot share its healing power because it has been separated off and kept in darkness. The sentinels of darkness watch over it carefully and you who made these guardians of illusion out of nothing are now afraid of them. Would you continue to give imagined power to these strange ideas of safety? They are neither safe nor unsafe. They do not protect, neither do they attack. They do nothing at all, being nothing at all. As guardians of darkness and of ignorance, look to them only for fear, for what they keep obscure is fearful. But let them go and what was fearful will be so no longer. Without protection of obscurity, only the light of love remains, for only this has meaning and can live in light. Everything else must disappear. Death yields to life simply because destruction is not true. The light of guiltlessness shines guilt away because when they are brought together the truth of one must make the falsity of its opposite perfectly clear. Keep not guilt and guiltlessness apart, for your belief that you can have them both is meaningless. All you have done by keeping them apart is lose their meaning by confusing them with each other. And so you don't realize that only one means anything. The other is wholly without sense of any kind. You have regarded the separation as a means for breaking your communication with your father. You have regarded the separation as a means for breaking your communication with your father. The Holy Spirit reinterprets it as a means of re-establishing what was not broken but has been made obscure. All things you made have used to him for his most holy purpose. He knows you are not separate from God, but he perceives much in your mind that lets you think you are. All this 
and nothing else would he separate from you. The power of decision which you made in place of the power of creation, he would teach you how to use on your behalf. The power of decision which you made in place of the power of creation, he would teach you how to use on your own behalf. You who made it to crucify yourself must learn of him how to apply it to the holy cause of restoration. You who speak in dark and devious symbols do not understand the language you have made. It has no meaning, for its purpose is not communication, but rather the disruption of communication. If the purpose of language is communication, how can this tongue mean anything? Yet even this strange and twisted effort to communicate through not communicating holds enough of love to make it meaningful if its interpreter is not its maker. You who made it are but expressing conflict from which the Holy Spirit would release you. Leave what you would communicate to him. He will interpret it to you with perfect clarity, for he knows with whom you are in perfect communication. For he knows with whom and these are capital letters whom you are in perfect communication. You know not what you say, and so you know not what is said to you. Yet your interpreter perceives the meaning in your alien language. Your interpreter perceives the meaning in your alien language. He will not attempt to communicate the meaningless but he will separate out all that has meaning, dropping off the rest and offering your true communication to those who would communicate as truly with you. You speak two languages at once and this must lead to unintelligibility. Yet if one means nothing and the other everything, only that one is possible for purposes of communication the other but interferes with it. The Holy Spirit's function is entirely communication. He therefore must remove whatever interferes with communication in order to restore it. Therefore, keep no source of interference from his sight, for he will not attack your sentinels, but bring them to him and let his gentleness teach you that in the light they are not fearful and cannot serve to guard the dark door behind which nothing at all is carefully concealed. We must open all doors and let the light come streaming through. There are no hidden chambers in God's temple. Its gates are open wide to greet his son. No one can fail to come where God has called him if he close not the door himself upon his father's welcome. So we open all doors and let the light stream through. And this we do within our hearts. We can do it right now. Just gently offer ourselves the rest, feeling this warm and profound invitation to not keep anything from the light, not keep anything from spirit. There are no hidden chambers. There is only guilt or guiltlessness. And it's the guilt we need to shine away right now. So again, open the mind and the heart. Breathe into a relaxed, open, 
place. Just open to the idea that nothing can be hidden. Nothing has hidden value. Spirit's function is communication and communion. Joining. Nothing needs to be held in tension. Nothing needs to be held apart. Nothing needs to be protected. Just allowed. 